All right, today I'm going to show you how to build the test bed for our robotics class. So the first thing you're going to need is your build plate. Okay, then you're going to get one of these pieces from me. You will also need a few of these long threaded beams. The ones in your box are one inch for most of you. These are actually three inches, so you'll have to get them from me. They should not, they might be in your box, but they shouldn't be. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is take your threaded beam, and we're going to attach it to the slot right here. So just put your screw in there. It's a red screw. Tighten that up. Same thing on this end. Tighten that one up. So, both fastened with red screws, three inch beams, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna put this onto the build plate here. Adjust my camera. Okay, you will want to put this near the edge. Doesn't it, You don't want it right on the edge because then it's really difficult to get your hands in the uh, when you go underneath to put the nut on, uh, or I, I'm sorry, you don't need the nut on this one, but when you go to try and screw in the screw, it's just difficult to get your hand in there. So I move it back one row. So I'm going to put it in my second row. Okay, it doesn't really matter where these go on your second row. Um, I'm going to have to move this just a little bit to get them to line up correctly right about there. So I'm going four holes in from each edge. You can do whatever works for you. Um, oh, actually, you know what? I've got this turned around backwards. You want it to go this way. So if you look, the slots here go on the front towards the edge of your build plate, and then the, this part that's sticking up goes towards the back of the build plate. So you want it to go... Oh, one of my beams moved right there okay so I'm going to put a red screw here so it pokes through that hole and then I'm going to put it into my threaded beam here For right now I'm just gonna hand tighten that and then I'll go back with the hex driver in just a minute. So you can see I'm just screwing it on there. Okay, now the same thing over here. Again, I'm just going four holes from the edge. No real reason. Just looked about right to me. And then I'm going to put that in the threaded beam here. Tighten it up. Okay, now I've got everything where I want it. Oh, that one I put in the third row. I'm going to have to fix that. I don't want this to be crooked. Try this again here. All right, now I've got it where I want it four holes in from the edge in the second row of holes. But as you can see, that is not sturdy in any way, right? That's why I always say just finger tightening is not good enough. So I'm going to get my hex driver here. Here it is. Thick hex driver and get these screws tightened.
Now, it's sturdy and stable. That's good quality work. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is attach my motor. You'll have to get one of these from me. And in order to, the first thing I need before my motor, I forgot to grab this. Bushing, you always need to use a bushing when you're going to use an axle, and obviously the motor needs an axle to attach to the wheel. So I'm going to go right here. Let me think here. Nope, I'm going to move it in a little bit. So I'm going to put my middle hole of my bushing is on the sixth hole. From the edge. Okay, when we put on bushings, we use green screws. The green screw goes into the motor. One green screw goes into the motor. The other green screw is going to go into a nut. Like that. Okay, so you can see Right, and then this hole of my motor, I'm going to use a blue screw. All right, so you can kind of see how everything's lined up. And then obviously, not sturdy, so I'm going to tighten everything. Now it's nice and sturdy. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this end. That one went into a nut. This one will go into the motor. Blue one into the motor. Uh. Does not want to go in. Okay, try this a different way. There we go. Now I got it. There we have it. Okay, next, you're gonna need an axle. The axle 
It's going to go in here. Okay. Now I need a collar. So I need a collar right here to keep my axle from falling out like that. Or wait. Sorry, I put it pointed to the wrong spot. It goes in here to keep the axle from falling out. So I'm going to hold my collar here. It's not easy to get your hands in there just right. And then you got to make sure that you get your axle all the way in. Notice how it's not moving. I can't turn it because it's locked into my motor. Okay, if you look at the motor, I'll have to get a different motor to show you. All right, the motor has a big square hole, and then inside of that, it has that littler square hole. Right inside there. Okay, so if you put your axle just in the big one, it moves around. You have to get it locked into that little one and you'll probably hear it click in like that and then I could turn it if I had a wheel attached to it but it's the motor has enough resistance that I can't turn it that's how I know it's locked in if you can move it around it's not locked in got to get it into that inside hole right there okay now I need to tighten my collar so I'm going to turn it so that the set screw is facing up here. Use your skinny hex driver. Okay, when you go to tighten it, make sure the set screw is hitting a flat part of your axle. If it's on the corner, it's not going to get tight enough. It's got to be here on the flat edge. Get that good and tight. Now my axle won't fall out. It's locked in there. Okay, same thing over here. Nope, this axle, the screw is locked down. There we go. So see, I thought I clicked it in, but I can move it around easily so it's not clicked in. Once I get it clicked in, can't turn it. Also, you want to make sure this collar is up against this metal piece. Not, you don't want it back here like that. You want it up against the metal here. All right, then I always check just to make sure I got my collars locked in there because I don't want my wheels falling off. Okay, next, you need wheels. You can use any of the wheels, doesn't matter which kind. Put that on there. And then... You'll put a collar on the end. Now when I put my wheel on, I want to leave just a little bit of a gap between my wheel and my metal piece right here. Okay? Leave a little gap right there. Yep, 
I was not thinking there. You're going to need to use a collar to uh, lock that wheel into place. So I'm putting a collar in the back here. And then I'm going to put a collar in the front too. Otherwise your wheel will slide back and forth. Okay. So you got a collar here. Collar here. Little gap right there. All right. Same thing on this side, but I need a couple more collars. Check, make sure my wheels aren't going to fall off, motors are secure, everything's good. Alright, next, you're going to add what's called your brain. Right here. You get this from Mr. Reese. Okay, I'm going to put mine on here. And... Just somewhere near the middle. It doesn't need to be exact. Just want it near the middle. It is easier if you put this end here by the wheels, this end facing you. Okay, green screws. Now I need nuts on the bottom. Now I'm going to tighten them. You don't need it super tight, but you don't want it to fall off for sure. All right. Next, you need one of these. Call that the bump switch. Little button. Teachers, please pardon this brief interruption. 